Okay, we're just going to talk about the sad news um, about Danny Kerwin passing. It's really, really sad news for the whole kind of guitar world. Um, Danny Kerwin was, of course, the guitar player in the original Fleetwood Mac. Peter Green um, formed the band and then he asked Danny Kerwin to join. And, um, you know, Danny Kerwin was a really big um, part of that band and he was a very melodic player. Peter Green's style is very melodic anyway. You know, if you listen to any of Peter Green's stuff, um, He's a very melodic player, you know, in the solos like from, if you listen to um, Black Magic Woman. And you can always almost sing the solo. Danny Kerwin was very much that kind of a player. He brought some really cool sort of techniques, I think, to to the blues guitar idiom. Um, such as, for, for example, like, you know, bending a minor third, sorry, bending a ninth. So if we were... Bending a ninth to a minor third, you know, and ha he had this really kind of heavy vibrato. And uh, there's a great song called Like It This Way, and it's very hard to play actually. Um, I think it's in A, it could be in G, can't remember, but anyway, I'll play it in A. So it's, it's kind of, you know, a really kicking song and, um, you know, really good. And also, I mean, the, obviously the most famous, the um, the song he did with Peter Green. And he did all the harmonies, you know. Um, which I think the harmonies were, if I remember like, rightly. Okay, I'm not able to play both those notes at the same time, but you know, so he was very melodic and he, he brought that harmony style of guitar playing. I think, you know, maybe even before the Ullman Brothers did it, certainly before bands like Thin Lizzy and all those kind of bands did that harmony thing, you know. So for me, he was a very, he was an innovator and not often talked about, Not he's not talked about enough, you know. I actually tried to meet him a couple of years ago. I was living in, in um, and working in South London um, and doing something with him. Um, music education and um, I heard that there was a care home near there that and he that where he was based I don't know if this information was correct but I kind of made a few inquiries to sort of see if I could actually meet the guy but you know I wasn't able to I mean he'd actually given up guitar um, pretty soon after he left Fleetwood Mac apparently he wasn't really playing I mean he even like sold his he had like a 954 Stratocaster and he was living uh, after Fleetwood Mac he went back to Leon C and was just hanging around the pubs there drinking you know too much and um basically <clears throat> you know not playing guitar and he sold all his stuff and i think he even sold a 954 strat to some shop guitar shop in in leon c and so um his girlfriend or former girlfriend um had to go there with some other guys and get the guitar back you know because the guitar shop had bought it knowing who it was and knowing his situation and bought the guitar for next to nothing so I think fortunately he got that guitar back. I'm not. I'm not sure of the whole story. And then after that, um, a lot of people saw him um, living rough in um, in the centre of London, right? You know, in Hyde Park, and you know, people would go and you know to see this guy who they'd hardly recognise, and he was literally sleeping on the street, rough, um, which was real sad. You know, he's a, he's one of the main icons of guitar and um, from the '60s, and he's just sleeping rough in Hyde Park and. So that was quite sad, but I think he, some of his family members, I'm not sure how it happened, but some of his family members managed to get him into a care home in London and um, so that he was able, I think, for the rest of his life to spend it in some comfort. So that's the good news. But yeah, sad, certainly um, a sad situation there. But like I said, his guitar style and his songwriting was brilliant. Um, one of my favourite songs is called Dragonfly. And you want to check it out because it's really sort of... Um, a great sort of style and um, when the sun is shining is another really cool song by him so he's a great very melodic um, songwriter and I'm, I'm just telling you this by memory you know this is what I know about the guy because I'm not reading from a Wikipedia page or something I'm just saying this is what I just know about the guy from from you know speaking to other musicians um, another thing about him was interesting was um, that he had perfect pitch um, so you know he could you know, um, I don't have perfect pitch, I have relative pitch, but I, you know, I've developed that through years of hard work, but he actually was born with perfect pitch, so, you know, if you played him that, he'd know that was an A note, 
you know, so that's another interesting fact. And, um, and the guitars he played was quite interesting. He played um, throughout, you know, Philip Mackey had a Les Paul with P90s. I think it was a 956 model because it had the, you know, the, what is it called, the trapeze, no, the, this Nashville style bridge or whatever you want to call it. Um, but he had P90s. And then from there, but he also used the Stratocaster because I think he had this, there, there was in Flute of Mac a 1954 Strat with a maple neck, a sunburst that was being used on, that was actually used on Albatross because Albatross wasn't played on a Les Paul, it was actually played on a Stratocaster with um, Danny. And I think Danny's, um, I'm pretty sure Danny's um, playing on Albatross, I think he did a lot of really clever stuff on Albatross, which he, he hasn't got recognized for. I think, you know, I, don't exactly know who played what, but I think Danny Kerwin really, really did um, a lot to that track. Um, and they, but in the band they had this 1954 Strat that they share. But I think that was a Strat that Danny Kerwin ended up with that was sold to the shop in South End, Leon C. Um, and a good friend of mine, actually, a very good friend of mine, um, used to drink in a pub with um, Danny. Um, you know, after the flute of Mac, so he was he he had a lot of stories that Danny told him. And, and, and my friend would always say to Danny, you know, are you going to pick up the guitar? You know, I'll bring you a guitar, come and play. And Danny was like, no, no, I don't want to play. No, that was that was the past, you know. So sad that he never sort of played again. Um, but, um, yeah, that's um, sad news today. You know, Danny Kerwin, one of my favourite players. Certainly check him out. If, you, if you're a blues guitar player or any other musician, you know, you should know his work. He's, he's part of the kind of the, the, the history of British blues, real, real important player, and um, I think you should definitely get more recognition for the, his songwriting, his playing, and um, and everything else. So uh, check him out. Thanks for watching this video, and uh, speak soon.